All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Randy here with RTS Mobile Gaming, bringing you a dynamite video today. We are playing the Lord of the Rings Rise to War, and in today's video, I decided to cover this fantastic report between a uh, basically free-to-play Eowyn and free-to-play Shadow, and I thought it was a very interesting report because the Eowyn performed significantly better than I expected. Uh, Shadow still took the W here with the draw. Um, but overall, a solid performance all around. So let's get right into it. Give me that like and sub. Go down in the description. Join the Forge Discord. Let's rock and roll. Now, this Eowyn is wearing blue gear with a few purples. Okay. Uh, the skill level, right, we're down in the tier 1 tree. We have Rohirrim, Riding Excellence. We have Cleave. And we have the Shield Maiden. We have defensive stance, and we have the attack vitals. So a little bit of commander damage between cleave and attack vitals. I don't think she did a whole lot of damage. I mean, 56k damage, right? Could definitely be worse, could definitely be better. Um, not too shabby. And the gear, right, is nothing crazy, which is nice to see. Um, like I said, blue with a few purples. Okay, ranger's dagger. So this fits in well for the battle with my Shadow, who is also running a blue gear setup, okay? So Shadow is over here with blue gear as well, running an uruk Pike with the 10% commander damage bonus for attacks, okay? Uh, we have Rough Breastplate, we've got the Fantastic Old Cask, and we have Drums of Moria! Um, Skill-wise, we are... Actually testing out a new slight variation on my my build here. I've moved points away from Morgul Poison and I put points in a Nazgul Screech in order to get a stun there in round one with a little bit of a damage nuke in round two. So overall it's a few thousand less damage in the first couple rounds, but having that stun in round one could be nice. However, against Eowyn, she uh well, with a higher respect level, she would give her unit stun immunity. We'll see how it played out in this fight, okay? For units, we're both using a pretty balanced variation of units. Um, she's using 1,000 Cavaliers, 1,000 of the uh, uh, Cataphracts, and 1,350 of the Cavalry Archers. And I'm just using a balanced 2,200 of all of the above, okay? How does it actually play out? That is a good question. We should, should see Shadow putting in some significant damage in the first couple rounds. Uh, I'm interested to see how much of the of effect the Nazgul Screech has between stuns and damage. Okay, so here's the Cavaliers coming in hot and heavy. The Bow Knights were stunned here in round one, ladies and gentlemen, so I was able to get away with stunning them in the face. Pew, pew. Okay. Here comes the Shadow coming in hot and heavy. Now, lower defenses is really nice because lower defenses um, can apply for both my units and Shadow, so I've decided that's one of Shadow's most valuable skills. As I drink my morning energy drink here. Okay, the Shadow coming in hot and heavy, hitting for uh, 12,000 damage, right? Another swing in there for just under 12,000 damage with attack number two. We have the Berserkers, the Alchemists, and the Halberdiers all coming in hot and heavy. All right, I mean, this, he puts out some decent damage. Unfortunately, the Alchemists uh, did not trigger the plus damage from lower defenses here, but the Halberdiers did. So, that's good to see. All right. Eowyn with the attack vitals. A little bit of a low damage there. I wonder what, what Cleave is going to be dealing uh, based on her speed. I'm um, interested to see how that plays out. So, here is the Nazgul Screech. This is with four points. Uh, 25, 33 damage. I did not trigger... Um, I did not trigger the Detect Weakness for 30% damage. So, I imagine that with that skill at 7 points, with max um, max damage procs, we might be somewhere around six to 7,000 damage um, per Nazgul Screech would be nice. Okay, here comes the Shadow coming in hot and heavy. I did not trigger Detect Weakness on any of the units here. 
Uh, so 9, 9,500 damage there. Another round where I didn't trigger, even though it's a 50% chance to trigger. I now have six attacks in a row without triggering it, which is poor RNG. Another 2,500 20, Nazgul Screech. There's the Alchemist coming in. See, I knew they would come in nice and get some good damage here with, uh, with lower defenses. <clears throat> oh yeah so it's interesting to see guys I mean he is putting out some good damage but so are the units with the detect weakness ability it is giving them more damage the lower defenses sorry how interesting how interesting some good damage, guys. So that's that's the story. I mean, that's it. I'm pumping out decent damage. The damage bonuses here from the R5 skill, lower defense. I kept saying tech weakness. Uh, that's his other skill. <laughs> He's a, it's just his lowering defenses. Um, this is triggering damage for my army and for the shadow, which is basically being pretty effective uh, for the Alchemists, for example, they're getting 30% damage on Ring Wraith, and they're getting 30% damage from lower defenses. So they're getting a 60% damage nuke, which is basically 15% uh, higher than the bonus that Kamul gives, right? So in theory, um, the Alchemists are putting out strong damage as part of a balanced march. So I'm liking this hybrid march where I'm running Berserkers, I'm running Alchemists, and I'm running Halberdiers. I think this is interesting. I like having the Halberdiers mixed in, especially since we're fighting Rohan right now. The Halberdiers offer a fantastic, tanky, um, decent damage dealing side to this army, right? You can see here, they kept up neck and neck. I mean, all the units kept up neck and neck with damage, which is great to see. And of course, the Halberdiers take enormously reduced damage from cavalry, so... I like this. I'm going to keep running this build, messing around with it. I love you guys all a long time. Happy frickin' Thursday. Randy out.